Ah, you don't become a legend by how you live, you become a legend by how you die. There is no doubt about it. David Martinez became a legend of Night City. But is this what he really wanted? Is this what would have made David happy? Truth be told, throughout the anime, it seemed he was told what to want rather than coming up with an answer for that question for himself, which is a pretty glaring flaw. But flaws are things main characters are supposed to have. It's what makes them relatable. And on that note, what makes for a great main character anyways? Simple answer is he or she has the it factor. They may not have everything sorted out, as mentioned, like an obvious flaw, but they have the thing. They are special. And for the most part, they overcome this obstacle and become this heroic figure along the way. However, this idea cannot exist in the world of cyberpunk. There are no happy endings. You simply do not overcome Night City. You submit to it with the chance of becoming a legend. So in Edge Runners, we are introduced to a main character who not only has the task of being likable, but he will need to make enough of an impact that makes sense within the realm of cyberpunk. The odds were stacked against David. But let's face it, Chooms, they delivered. David was a strong, likable character, but to ensure that there was no happy ending, David was written as a flawed character who did not know what he wanted. Our beloved main character lived for his mom and his chooms, and of course for the love of his life. And by doing this, we are given an engaging character, one full of hope and charisma, but was an easy target for the monster that is Night City. David never wanted to be a legend. He never once said anything about that. But because he was so willing to do things for those closest to him, he inevitably becomes a legend in the city of dreams. You chooms know me, I like to break down what makes a character tick. And we're gonna do just that with David. So if we apply some psychological theories like I did in my previous videos, specifically Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we can see in this chart that David falls under the deficit needs, meaning he needs to fill in these gaps before he can effectively answer that lingering question. What does David want? This is because that question of asking what you want, what your dream is, and all of that fun stuff is, in my opinion, something that is part of the growth part of this scale. And if we break it down further, it makes sense that David does not know what he wants. He has yet to attain some of these basic needs. He is barely paying things off, and you can tell he is struggling. It's like asking a child with a torn family what they want in life. When in reality, their need for love and family is non-existent. They do not know how to answer that question because you are asking them to think ahead when they are concerned with the present. Imagine not having money for food and then being asked what you think about Plato's philosophies. You wouldn't bat an eyelash because you wouldn't know the answer to that question either. Same goes for David. And to add to this, let's say you do find stability through a job and you are able to attain basic needs. This does not mean that a switch has been flipped and all of a sudden you are secure and stable. Things like this take time. You need to get into a rhythm, a flow, before you can start tackling the next obstacle. And we can clearly see this in David's life. He goes from one family, his mom, to Maine's crew. You can argue that because of his lifestyle, he has yet to achieve true stability. He is always on survival mode. So when his mom tells him what her dream is for him, he just goes with the flow. After all, she is the person currently providing for his needs. Once she passes, he finds Maine. David sees an opportunity to check off that box, the need of belonging. He sees a group of edge runners and instantly forces his way in. Call it what you want, desperate or such, this is him filling a hole within himself. Lastly, Lucy. Need I say more? The man was in love and did everything in his power to make her dream come true, not his, but her dream. All of this further backs the point that David did not know what he wanted. He just wanted to belong, to have a sense of family, camaraderie, feel love and friendship. He did not think about being a legend of Night City. That is a byproduct of him helping those closest to him. Now we have to give credit where credit is due. David Martinez is flawed, but he was eccentric and he was always 100% committed. Case in point, chroming up and using a military grade cyberware. Not once, but twice. He just went straight into the deep end. What is sweet and terrifying at the same time, because she knew, is that Lucy saw through David 
instantly that she essentially calls him out for this. She says in episode 4 that David is the type of guy that will run into a burning building even if he burns himself. Not only is this proven when he puts on the cyber skeleton for Lucy, but also for Maine when he is going cyber psycho. David still runs in trying to help. Yeah, he didn't do much, but Lucy was right. David is that type of guy. And as we discuss Lucy's, I guess, character breakdown, this is one important point. She already knew, but she still fell in love with this chumba. We'll talk more about that in her video. As we continue to watch David's character unfold, we come to realize that David was never going to answer this question. He will never have a dream for himself. He will never be truly happy. At the end of it all, he wants to satisfy his needs of belonging and love first by helping those closest to him. Originally, I thought David's story mirrors Maine. Now I have come to realize David is actually a bit more tragic. Maine, even though he does not make it to the top, at least he worked towards his dream and his goal. The biggest difference being he at least lived and died heading towards his goal. David did not even know what his goal or dream was. Then things went from bad to worse. David would no longer have that compass directing him to true north with Maine's passing and Lucy was becoming more and more distant. Things were slowly turning for the worst. With the shift in the social setting, David's mental health also deteriorates. And this makes a lot of sense. If your father figure is gone, that buffer is no longer there. You are now the man calling the shots. And yes, it came easy for David. This does not take away from the fact that he no longer has that protection. This is something I think all of us feel when we start making adult decisions. There is an ever lurking presence haunting us, questioning our every decision. Then your partner who is supposed to be your rock seems shaken and distant making hard decisions seem impossible. This on top of the worries of your crew becomes an amalgamation of stress and anxiety. Oh, and let's not forget the cyberware you have on. This is why I continue to argue that David is special and that in the right conditions, he would have been able to overcome cyberpsychosis. But I digress. David lived and died for his tombs. He followed in the footsteps of his predecessors. And you know what? He even accomplished their dreams for them. At least metaphorically speaking, David, for a brief moment, was at the very top of Night City. He did all this despite having no dream and never reaching true happiness. That's going to do it for my breakdown about David and the fact that he never knew what he wanted. He seemed to just do things for other people. And I think it's fine that this happened because, one, we got to remember, David's a young man. He's a young kid. And for the most part, it's not like we have or, you know, anyone we know at that age has life figured out. Now, imagine that person living in Night City with all the other issues you have to, I guess, resolve and encounter. There's just too many factors in play for you to eventually have an understanding of what it is you want. And if I can just make things a little bit more real, it's like, you know, when you're in high school and I hated it when teachers would always ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's like, girl or dude, I don't even know if I want to be in school. I don't even know if this is something I want to go through with. Um, so there's just a lot of things, I guess, that is relatable to me personally. But it's definitely something that is tough when you look at a character like David. There's so many expectations for him because, yeah, he's the main character, but they just did such a good job writing everything towards or i guess aligning towards the idea that nobody wins in night city but he was such a good main character because he was likable there were parts about him that were redeemable and you felt hopeful that maybe just maybe he'll be able to overcome night city but again uh, the writers stay true to the world of cyberpunk and eventually our main character david went out with a bang. So in honor of David, make sure you guys go to the afterlife. Go grab yourself a David Martinez and do a toast for our fellow legend. That's going to do it for me and this one, Edge Runners. Make sure to add and smash that like and sub button for more cyberpunk content. I will see you, Edge Runners, in the next one. Bye.